Hi everyone. So today I have something really cool to show you. Uh, I know it sounds a bit clickbaity, but would you believe that I could make this? Just a few, let me reveal to you. Just this, an empty stave with some chord symbols in MuseScore. It is pretty astounding, and it's all thanks to this Contact 7 VST. A contact player is a free VST uh, instrument kind of that, that lots of people write instruments for. Uh, and in this case, I'm using, let's wait for it to load up, the Orchestra Elements by Sonu Score. And so this is really the, the heart of the thing. And it's this that is allowing me to get that full kind of almost orchestral sound. Obviously, it's only a section of the, it's, it looked like it's strings and choir, female choir, but an amazing sound that we can get just with chord symbols. So I want to show you how we did that. Uh, and let's play around with it and see what we can do. Some other effects that we can get with this. I will say from the get-go that installation was not very comfortable. In fact, I got it wrong once and I thought that this wasn't working with MuseScore, um, but it is. is. I'm. You can see I'm using Contact 7. Uh, I know there is a Contact 8 player and it probably does work, but when I first tried it with Contact 8, it wasn't working, probably my own stupidity. Um, but we have this SonuScore website, uh, SonuScore.com, and this is the Orchestra Elements and it is completely free, which is wonderful. It is quite large. I think it was, uh, was it two gigabytes or four gigabytes? Um, you know, it's, it's a fairly large library, but that one is free, which is really cool. They obviously do have ones that you can pay for. Uh, let's see if we can find some examples. Here we go, there's some comparisons. Uh, we also have an Essentials, the Orchestra and the Complete. I can't imagine how big that is. And then all of the other things as well. And of course, we needed the contact player. Here's contact eight player. And uh, you can download that free with complete start, which is their bundle, including this app called Native Access, which is the kind of uh, native instruments downloader, installer, and all those kind of things. And you can see I've got the orchestra elements installed through that. And I think that's what I was missing the first time. So when if you do decide to download this, just please make sure you read the instructions carefully. Um, it's a whole thing about adding a serial number that you need to do. And I think that's what I missed the first time. Okay, so let's get into this and see how we can use just the chord symbols uh, to create this wonderful sound. So let's start our new score. And I'm literally just going to choose an oboe and keyboards a piano. And the second one really could be anything. We're not using the actual piano. It's just because it makes sense to me that that's a chordal instrument. Uh, we got to keep all of those. Let's just make this in whatever key we want. I chose F minor. Okay, and we start up with the mixer as an oboe and a grand piano. That is perfectly fine. And let's close the mixer for now and put us into continuous view. And that makes a lot more sense. Okay, and the oboe I'm going to even ignore for now. That's going to be where we want to write our melody, but I find it easier to write a melody once I've got some chords underneath it. So let's make the chords first. And I'm going to decide right now that I want a two bar intro, then the melody will start with my chord progression, whatever it is. Very easy to build chords. I'll go click on my first bar and control K for chords, of course, because that's how you spell chords, right? And let's start with a tonic chord, F minor. That can go for two bars. Uh, control and right goes to the next bar. Then the start of the melody, let's have another two bars F minor. Let's go to a chord six, a D flat major chord. Also two bars. Chord four, B flat minor. Just for one bar. To a G flat major, that's the flattened second. And to the dominant, to end this all off, and then 
Let's go up till there. I've used Control Shift and N to select the rest of the bars, and then Control Delete to delete the extra bars. Okay, so we've got our very short, what's this, an eight bar melody? Yep, eight bar melody with a two bar intro from the, from the fake orchestra. And I could just use that. And I could probably write a melody to this, right? But we don't just want the melody, we want some kind of movement happening underneath and that will allow us to, to write a melody more easily. Uh, and that's where our Sonia score comes in. So let's get our mixer open. And in here you can see chords.piano, which means it's the chord symbols related to our piano track. Uh, and then we can choose the instrument here. So instead of grand piano, we will go VST3, native instruments, and I've got contact 7 over here. And contact seven loads up. I'll choose the orchestra elements. Okay, and these are the presets that we have available to us. I've used the icy lake, I think. So let's double click that, let it load. And there we go, we've loaded up an icy lake, which has these instruments in. And we'll go and have a look at this now, but you can already see. got a really nice chordal thing going just from chord symbols uh, and now of course we want to start playing with the possibilities inside of this uh, essential orchestra plugin because there's just so many possibilities for us of course there are some limitations and we'll get to those just now but let's start with some interesting possibilities first shall we um, one thing is that we can obviously try all of their different okay now here's our first limitation sorry so one of the limitations at the moment, I'm not entirely sure why, is that um, we cannot change anything in here unless it is playing back. Slightly odd, I know, but that's what we have to work with. Uh, so I'll just play back every now and again. In the meantime, we can see all of the different possibilities that we have. So we've got woodwinds, basic eighths, triplets, and I think sustain, oh sorry, strings chasing sixteenths. We've got brass, mixed orchestra, and then a whole bunch of these ones that are named with very interesting looking names. So we want to go check those out. And of course, we choose an icy lake for now because that fits the kind of oboe, almost swan lake. I think we were, I was a little bit influenced there. Um, so let's just have a run through some of these as we go. That's Burning Skies, Men of War, very cool concept, Calling the Guardians, interesting one, Shoot to Kill, Midnight Pulse, Interesting one, leaving the base. Hidden Sanctuary. Beautiful shimmering strings. Building an empire. driving force. So I think any of these could be really useful as a composing tool just to give you something to build on top of really quickly. I'm not saying that you're going to have your final version of your composition as this. I don't think that's the intention. Uh, for me, that's certainly not the purpose. But it is something that can get you going really quickly, just kind of like adding a pad underneath. But this one has some rhythmic movement, uh, which really is nice. Another possibility to use would be some of these either mixed
So this is basic eight. We also have basic triplets. Some really interesting stuff. And what is especially uh, appealing to me about this is that it is so customizable in that I can change these elements, I think. Can we do this in the free version? Let's see. Let's make our first one stronger. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Yep. That's really cool that we can do that. And we've got all these different arpeggiators that we can use. Is anyone using arpeggiator too? Yes, the bassoon staccato is using that. Okay. So we can hear that bassoon. That's really, really effective to use those. And arpeggiator 3 is on the cello staccato. The arpeggiator will follow the notes in our chord symbols um, using these, you know, these settings that we've got. So it's in this case it's up, but we can change them. We can transpose it. We can define how many octaves it is how often it repeats, if it's got some swing, which is pretty incredible as well. So the cello is only using the lowest note, lowest for the bassoon, but note selection off. Okay, because it's doing all of them. It's doing the whole chord. And the same with the bassoons. But the cello is jumping around. So there are all these amazing settings that you can play with. Um, and here I think is where your creativity comes in, right? The, the point of this is not to just slap something on and say, hey, look what I made, I've made music. The point is to go and experiment and play around with the different kinds of sounds you can get. And so I think this is a really powerful piece of software. So why would I want to do this? I've already said getting to a melody quickly. That's a really useful feature. Could also be really good for outlining the structure of your music. Chord symbols are a great way to do that. Uh, and if you decide that you want you know, the first section to be fast paced and full of action, and then after that we just want sustained notes, you can do that. Uh, we'd probably have separate, separate lines for this, um, but that's, that's a really good way that you can use this to just outline things quickly and easily with your chords uh, and get it going. I also really like it because you don't have to worry about voice leading and orchestration. Um, certainly at the beginning when you first start, right? You can, you can slap something on and experience how your music could sound before you start reworking things uh, and fine tuning things to how you want it. And I also really like this ability to change the rhythms that we have. And it's very intuitive, right? I can change the, the volume of the rhythm, um, it, whether it's on or off, obviously, and that changes potentially all of the instruments or some of the instruments really, really quickly uh, and not having to worry about changing each note. You know, if I was working in MuseScore, um, having to adapt chords and notes as I go along. So I find this a really interesting piece of software to speed up potentially a workflow, or it's just having a different workflow, really. Uh, and I want to encourage everyone to start using these kind of tools in your composing. So I've put us back on Icy Lake because I also wanted to show you this other part of the engine, which is the envelope. Uh, and so let's see who uses the envelope. Violin one sustain uses envelope one. And I really like that you can have different things for each slot. Look, there are only the five slots, but that's fine. We can certainly use that. So let's go see. Okay, and this is a four bar length, but we could make it a one bar length. How would that sound? I think we probably want a two bar length. That's really nice. And you can literally just And 
you can hear those violins doing exactly that. So it's really, really cool. Now, unfortunately, at this stage, the limitation is that we cannot change our tempo. So just to give you an idea, I will change my tempo. Let's go to crotch equals 80, make this a much slower piece. And you can hear that the, the op those plucked arpeggios are just not going at the same rate as our tempo. So it seems like this stays at 120. Uh, so yes, that is definitely a limitation. If anyone knows how to change that in contact, I'm not a regular contact user. Is there somewhere to tell it to keep the tempo locked into to the, the host? Uh, I would have thought it would just do it automatically, but clearly not. So please let me know if we can find that somewhere. But even, even with that limitation, I think this is a really cool tool to have something that you can use straight away. And just to end off, I want to show you, I tried one with leaving the bass. So here I've got a horn and the chords. Not saying that's the greatest melody, uh, but it was really nice to be able to write that melody with the idea of this underlying motion happening. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you feel like seeing more of this kind of thing. I have musical tutorials and uh, bye for now.